EA Sports brings you a special edition of the National Football League for this Halloween matchup. It's the New England Patriots and the Chicago Bears, and it comes your way next. They say summer is the time to live in Chicago. Well, that's extended into autumn as we are ready to roll under blue skies at Soldier Field. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And for both of these teams that we're going to see, Charles, the future is kind of right now. You know, this is something you only see a handful of times in an NFL season where you've got a rookie quarterback versus a rookie quarterback. And I think a lot of that has to do with the era we're in now because our dads, they didn't see rookie quarterbacks go against each other. In fact, it could be two, three years before they even saw the playing field. Nowadays, you get drafted, they expect you to play earlier, and these guys as competitors, they'll take their lumps early, but they'd rather be on the field. Set for football now on a sunny afternoon in the second city. And off we go from Soldier Field. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. So here come the Patriots to take over for the first time, led out by the rookie, the third overall pick back in April out of UNC, and that's Drake May. And it's been a long time, but this franchise entered the offseason desperately needing a young quarterback to build around and plan for the future. And they found their guy in Drake May out of North Carolina. Big arm, great mobility, terrific character. He's everything you're looking for in a quarterback. It may bring him along slowly, but I believe in time, he will be their QB1 and be there for a long time. Douglas, the man in motion. They'll start on the ground with Gibson. And that is the kind of tackling they want to see all game as he'll lose yardage to start things out. It'll go as a loss of three right away, and it's second down. I really like what he did there because he took his practice work and converted it to game action because he used his hands, got off the block, worked laterally and stayed to the outside, and finished off the runner for a loss. To throw, it's May. That one on the money to Baron downfield. Down to the 10. And all the way in. Touchdown, New England. Kendrick Bourne, 73 yards. And the Patriots need just two plays on their opening drive to take the early lead. Well, if they didn't get the wake-up call before the game, they got it right now. Two plays already in the end zone. I think of it in boxing terms because... Whether it's a big shot with your first one or a probing one, a little bit of a jab, the second one was the payoff. That was the big one that landed. One, two, end zone. Joey Sly on for the extra point. And he gets it to make it 7-0 Patriots. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. So the Bears ready to go on offense, and it's the number one overall pick leading them out. The Heisman Trophy winner from USC, Caleb Williams. And I'll bet he's talking to his guys about resisting the temptation to try and turn this into an up-and-down game, almost like basketball where both teams press and one team gets an advantage, our team's trying to run with them and they're just not equipped for it. Doesn't matter whether you're equipped or not, just settle in, get calm before you go for the big strikes. Here's Williams. He'll get this complete to the rookie from Washington. And he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. 
Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. Defense gives... And now hold everything here as the challenge flag is out. And we're going to get a review of that last play. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. First carry for DeAndre Swift. And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. 16 yards is the pickup there and a first down for Chicago. Well, no slow start here. A couple nice chunk plays back-to-back. -back. I love the momentum that they're showing here early because they did it both ways, right? Threw the ball on first down for a nice chunk of yardage. Came right back and ran the ball. Looks like they've got the defense set back on their heels. Let's see if they can keep this moving. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. 12 more yards there and another first down. So back-to-back -back big runs, picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the <laughs> era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. And they didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Here's second and 10. Looking to throw is Williams. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. This early in the game, it's all about making steady progress downfield, hoping to lead to early points. And you can do it with your actual play calls or sometimes something a little more improvised, as we just saw there. They'll try and run here with Swift. And just good downhill running there as he'll take this to the 15-yard line. It's a pickup of 10 and a Bears first down. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. He's got a man, that's Keenan Allen. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. First down marker at the five. It's second and goal. And he will score. Touchdown, Chicago. Caleb Williams, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Bears respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. The RPO is such a big part of college football, Charles, and it continues to become a bigger part here at the next level, too. And it also helps to have a rookie quarterback who comes out of that college game and is familiar with how to run it. So it works both ways. He knows what he's doing, and now it allows the coaches to call plays to get him comfortable early. Cairo Santos on to try the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. So that drive in total eight plays, and it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. Yeah. 
Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Oh, a good look in return set up here. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Pats offense had Kendrick Bourne headed back onto the field, and he's had an early impact on the game. Sensational so far, and they'll likely be looking to find more ways to get him involved. The Pats at the line, ready to go. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Straight ahead, Gibson. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean, or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's a second and eight. First carry now for Ramondre Stevenson. And down to the 44, five yards that time. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. And they'll send the tight end in motion. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. And the delay of game penalty makes this much more difficult. Third and eight. They go play action now. May. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. And now a pause. It looks like we have a Patriot injured on the play. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. So from the 36 now, first and 10. And right side, they're going to go option here. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Now that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained. And in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he's still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. To throw is Brissett. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Hunter Henry. And it's third and five. to throw Brissett. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. That's sacked by Tremaine Edmonds. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left leg. Appears to be fine now, but you're right. That O-line, they got to protect him. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This will be from 56 yards out. These two teams all tied after one. The 
Start of the second quarter, and it's the Patriots in control of the football as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. And the first play will be a field goal try. Kicking into a headwind here in the second quarter. And that is no good. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. And anytime you see a kicker trot out to try one for 56 yards, you know everything's got to come off perfectly for it to have a chance. If the laces aren't quite right, if he doesn't hit the fat part of the ball just right, it's unlikely to go through. And that one winds up no good. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. 50 yards rushing for him now. He's only carried the ball four times. His first carry of their second drive, pretty solid. And, of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurtling through them. They'll go play action here with Williams. And that's out to the flat for Swift. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. So the completion good for just three. And it'll be second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. A little short pass. This is Everett. So just three yards on the completion there. And now it's third and four. That was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. This now a third and four. To throw, Williams. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. And that's a crusher right there. Had his man open for a first down. Threw a fastball when that wasn't necessary. Incomplete pass. One of these quarterbacks going to learn. You don't get extra points for how hard you throw the football. Santos kick is up and through. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The Bears send the kicking team out there, and they will send this one away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. New England's offense set to go. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles, and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send out the field goal unit and then to not even see the ball go through the post. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Got to pick themselves up from that one. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven, past the 30 to the 32. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Play action, May. And he finds Douglas complete. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down.
We're going to throw May. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. To the air, May. Short pass caught by Henry. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Good work after the catch. Gets him 15 and a first down. And it's a real luxury when you have a guy who can turn a short throw into a solid gain at any moment. Once he caught that ball, he ID'd where the open grass was and got there in a hurry to pick up a new set of downs for his offense. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Second and ten. They'll throw with May. Short pass caught by Henry. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Throwing here is May. He's got Hooper on the short connection. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. It'll go as a gain of four. And that'll bring up fourth down. A short gain that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. They'll try and throw for it with May. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. That's a fourth down pickup of 10 yards and an opportunity certainly missed on the defensive side. So they convert on fourth, and now from just outside the 30, here's first and 10. Here's May. They'll get this underneath to Stevenson. Second down and eight. Off the play fake. Here's May. Now Brown. Oh, he lost the football. And this is picked up by the Bear. Taking it right down Broadway. And they bring this one back. A fumble return for a Bears touchdown. And Charles, look at the big fella. What a rumble that was. Not only to scoop it, but then take it the rest of the way for the touchdown. And now you know they're going to have to hear about it from now on. The defensive backs, he's going to want to run with them, do their drills, the whole deal. He thinks he's the pace setter now. It doesn't matter what happens in practice this week. He's smiling. Santos now to add the PAT. It's good to make it 17-7. So not only the cough up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. Oh, 
And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. They trail by 10, 17-7 as they come up on a first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Over the middle, complete. That's Douglas. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. 18 big yards on that one, and a New England first down. Now how about this throw right here? Had to throw it to the left sideline, and you know the timing's got to be correct on this one. Ball's got to be right where it needs to be, and it was. That's because he had great arm strength on that one, able to drive the football. Quarterbacks love it when they can show off their arms. On first down, he'll drop to throw. They set up the screen for Stevenson. They find some open field here. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Another 18-yard gain. They had 18 on the previous snap as well. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches. And they're trying to create one there. Getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space. Let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. It actually gives him a chance to regroup. Relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. From the gun, it's May. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Douglas. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Back to throw again. Setting up a screen for Stevenson. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. Field goal unit and Joey Sly now. From the right hash, it's a 41-yard attempt. Sly able to put this one through, and they're back within a touchdown. It's 17-10. to So he missed his first attempt, remember, but this time he gets back on the bike and knocks it home. Yeah, and sometimes that first one can really impact you moving forward. It can just stay with you too long and affect everything else you do during the game. In this case, though, able to shake it off. He's riding high again. After the made field goal, here's Sly to kick this one away. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, still a good return. They'll start the drive right around the 37. Well, let's shine the spotlight on the former Georgia Bulldog, DeAndre Swift, who's set to begin this next drive. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. To the air, Williams. The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. And every game we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them, and they get their first sack of the contest.
Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. They don't want to repeat a first down. They'll keep it on the ground. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. And a change of scenery in 2023 worked out well for Swift as he racked up a new career high in rushing yards during his lone season as an Eagle. And now he's made the move to Chicago and is expecting to power their running game. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. A final shot before break. Williams. He's going to take a shot at the end zone. Why not? And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete. But the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. So that P.I. call will give him one more play. And it'll be an untimed play as well. Now the half will end after this one, unless there's another, there's another defensive one. penalty. Santos' kick is up and through, and that will do it for this first half. So we are at halftime here on Halloween as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. Set to resume. Here we go with the second half. The Bears holding the lead and ready to receive the kick. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Bears offense and running back DeAndre Swift headed back onto the field. And you have to imagine this defense saying, how do we stop this guy? He has run roughshod through him to this point in the third quarter. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And they've got the lead, CD. What do you expect from them in the second half? Well, I like what they were able to do on the ground in the first half because they had a lot of success running the ball, and I certainly think we'll see more of that. But I'd keep an eye on that defense, and I think their coaches up in the box will do the exact same thing. If they start to see one or two guys start to creep towards the line of scrimmage, that'll be licensed to take some shots downfield. From the 31, here's a second and nine. Once again, it's Swift. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. Here comes third down at seven. Throwing is Williams. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. To throw, it's Williams. And there's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. From the 42-yard line, here's second down and seven. He'll get that one to Carter complete. It'll be a gain of five, 
And now that sets up third and two. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. On third down, here comes Swift. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? Lava's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards from the 34 now. Here's first and 10. They'll run the draw here with Swift. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Second and a couple. Swift going to try up the middle, and he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Four yards the pick up, first down. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. On first and 10, it's Swift. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. So from the 17, here's second and seven. They'll stay on the ground with Swift. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 108 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. Swift. Diving for the end zone, and he is in. Touchdown. Some good running there at the end of the drive. He had the burst that set up the first and goal, and then one play later, he's in the end zone. Brandon, what I liked about that sequence is I'm not sure who made the play call, but they understood the situation, understood the momentum. A nice hard-charging run, give it right back to him and let him cap things off. Now the point after try for Santos. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So that one, a long 11-play drive. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. The Bears send the kicking team out there, and they will send this one away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. So here are the Patriots now. They get ready for their first possession of half number two. To throw it's May got the connection here to board and they work this well up field across the 45 the catch and run good for 24 yards and this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open just a little underneath route just trying to free up some space and it worked awfully well got him not just space but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage and not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. 
Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Soldier Field. It's Patriot football, but they trail here as we begin the fourth quarter. From the shotgun, it's May. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. This offense so far on third down, they've only converted once in four tries. This is third and seven. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Patriots first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's one of those where it feels like backyard football in a sense. You say, forget about the route. Just run to the open spot in the middle of the field, and I'll find you. Good throw, good concentration on the catch, and they pick up the first down. They'll look to throw here on first down. They'll set up the screen for Gibson. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. And that flag accepted. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Again, he'll drop to throw. Pressure, and he's taken down. A bear sack. It's Jervon Dexter who got in to drop him. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hadn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. You yeah. see what I did there? Yeah. He needs better protection, that's for sure. Now they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. Back to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Douglas. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Tremaine Edmonds, the linebacker, able to break that one up. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And they're going to try the screen. It's complete. But they're going to wrap him up as he'll go down well short of a first. The Patriots come up empty on fourth down. And the Bears will get the football back. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll start on the ground with Swift. 
And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. 120 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Throw right side, take it in by Adunze. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Well, a clear running situation. Try to take time. And now some disagreement down on that sideline. The red flag is out, and we're going to get a challenge. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. Winds up a very good call there defensively to challenge that one as that now will wind up an incomplete pass. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They will run straight ahead with Swift. And he will have the Bears first down. At least it would appear that way. He didn't get it by much, but yes, they do get the conversion on third and one. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. Yeah, he's able to push his way forward somehow for a gain of about two yards. Second down now. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. From the 46, here's second down and eight. From the gun, here's Swift. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Here's Williams. That is caught, and he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down, and that's what he just did. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. They run out of the gun with Swift. And a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. It's a pickup of 10 and a Bears first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. On the handoff, this is Swift. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. They're in a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Oh 
So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last point of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Bears get the win at home as we say so long.